For the next 60 minutes, what we're going to do is uh, get to know Tori Amos, a very special singer and a musician now living in London, but who actually originally hails from North Carolina. It was there that she began what has got to be one of the more unusual stories in the music world these days. The daughter of a Methodist minister, a musical prodigy at age three, she was accepted to a prestigious conservatory at five, expelled at 11. She then played in bars at age 13, moved on to Los Angeles to front her own band, and now Tori's life and musical focus have since taken a, a very different turn, and she's released a critically acclaimed solo album entitled Little Earthquakes. Now, in just a little bit, she's going to be stopping by to chat with us and play three songs live from that album. I'm really looking forward to that. But before all of that, I want to give you a look at Tori's first video from Little Earthquakes. This is Silent All These Years, Tori Amos. Sort of a harem setting, as we were saying before we started. Yeah, it's very Arabic. <laughs> our, our guest is our Tori Amos, who has released uh, an album that just about everyone I know is talking about these days called Little Earthquakes. And you've got to be, now I talked to, gave, I'm, which I'm sure you love these thumbnail histories, bios, as I gave at the top of the show, but, um, but, uh, you must be pretty gratified that after, I mean, after some time of going through various different things, it's such a response to this record. It's kind of surprising. Yeah. I mean, I just, um, when I wrote this record, I had to do it because it was really do it or die. It was my form of expression so that I didn't lose my mind completely. And I didn't really think about where it was going to go. I just had to write it. And so, and, and now that it has gotten such, on, on the one hand, a great response, but it's, it's put you in a whole different, apart from, I mentioned in, also in the beginning, an al a band you were with in L.A., but that was a completely different kind of thing, musically. And, um, well, I was, I've been doing a lot of different things before this yeah. in many areas <laughs> of my life. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think you've got to experiment. I think that you've got to try different things. And I was just, I was definitely into a hairspray phase then. Uh -huh. But I had a fabulous collection of hairspray, <laughs> and I was just um, not going to write at the piano. That was just too close to home for me at the time. So I made a decision, kind of unconsciously. I wasn't going to talk about the Mina Gun experience. I wasn't going to talk about um, the religious influences. Not too much. I touch on things. But if you open one door, about a thousand are going to open. And I think I was completely terrified of having to look at myself and my monsters, all those fun things. And it's, but it, once you start to do it, is it does it become easier? To... Well, <laughs> I started having dinner parties with myself. And, you know, you have the virgin and the prostitute next to each other having <laughs> spaghetti bolognese. And you just go, uh -huh. I think they need each other. Right. Because it's very easy to be the self-righteous good girl and, and to have um, an idea of how everybody's consciousness should be and how everybody should think. And that was earlier years. And then it became, I had to become that thing that I always pointed the finger at. You know, that girl that was just, oh, God. Not her coming into the room. So right. then I had to go through that and finally come back to, these are all pieces. Right. These are pieces of me, and it's not about they're bad. It's just um, you're made up of a lot of things. You know, you have the coward, and then you do have the hero, if you will. Different you have that one sure. of you have that part of you that can be really there for you. She mentioned a song called "Me and a Gun," which is one of the song, one of the three songs Tori's going to be performing live this hour. Going to get her over at the piano in just a minute. But right now we've got her on videotape once again. This is the, the second video from uh, It's the second the one we did in the UK. It's called China. We did it in North Cornwall. Right. And Cindy Palmano directing again. Right. Bloody cold. <laughs> was Freezing it cold? Was it cold? Oh, <laughs> the guys were in um, <laughs> down jackets. And they were standing there with umbrellas. It was pouring down rain and a uh -huh. lot of it. And they just looked and said, how do you do it? And I said, because I've been in the edit suite when they go, where's that other reel? Yeah. And there's no other reel. Right. Get it right that, <laughs> that time. All right, trying to stay warm in this one. It is the second video from Little Earthquakes, Tori Amos and China. We'll be back. All right, welcome back to this hour of MTV where our guest is Tori Amos, a woman who's uh, 
His album, Little Earthquakes, as we talked earlier, has, has certainly been well received, but has, in just about everything I've read, invited these people can seem unable to resist these comparisons to, well, on, to, to a point, Joni Mitchell, but even more so, Kate Bush. Are these, I mean, and I read actually that you said it's, it's interesting that people say that because you, your influences have been, more been male singers than, than female singers. Is that? Well, I mean, I, I listened to tons of stuff growing up. To just pinpoint it to one thing is yeah. not really accurate. But um, when you're compared to people like that, those women are wonderful. I have such respect for them. But you do get kind of, I think the media, you go, don't you guys have anything else to do except come up with this stuff? I mean, I think that the women get compared a bit more than the men do. And I think that is a fair take. That's just honest. And, you know, I've said before, and I really mean this, when you get a few women out there singing, they go, what is it, too many tets or something? They have to start mm -hmm. comparing them all, and I, I think that it, we're, we're individual. There might be moments, but just because uh, you play a similar instrument, it's not like there are too many to choose from. Well, maybe one reason that the Kate Bush thing has come up a lot is because the British press has talked to you a lot, and of course, Kate has always been major over there. And you're living in London now. How did that come about? That move is that your idea? Well, their idea. Truthfully, I always wanted to go there. Yeah. I mean, I I always always wanted to go there. So I was like, I had a voodoo doll of the president of Atlanta going. <laughs> Uh -huh. And um, <laughs> he doesn't know this. Anyway, he said to me, I really think people need to hear this record live when he heard it. He said, I really think people need to hear you do this. He heard me do it at my little hut in Los Angeles. And I said to him, um, well, where do you propose that I do this? Because Los Angeles really isn't a live music town. I mean, it's just not, especially for what I do. They want to... This isn't a negative. I mean, I did this m my seven years that I lived there. You finish doing your thing, and you want to go home and sit on the deck, have a good meal with your sweetheart. And it's L.A. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's not really about going out every night. And right. London, they go out. Absolutely. They work, and they go see bands, and they go see artists, and it's very much a part of the life there. And um, he suggested that to me. What do you think about London? Because the London company... The London side of the label, which is East West, really loved the record, and it wasn't any kind of, we don't know how we want to introduce you to people. We know what we want to do, and we think that they'd be really open, because they don't have formats like right. this country it has. It's not right. like right. that. Well, she got her wish to go over there, and we're going to get our wish in just a few minutes because we got Tori doing three songs live here in the studio. Looking forward to that. Don't go away. You don't want to miss it. Tori Amos will be back. All right, welcome back, everybody, to this hour of MTV, where a special guest has joined us, Tori Amos, whose uh, album, Little Earthquakes, certainly one of the most talked about records um, I've seen come out this year around MTV and elsewhere. And this is an album that's um, comprised of songs written over how long? Quite a period of time, or...? About four and a half years. And this, this lead-off track we're about to hear, the first song from the album, um, an older song, a newer song? Well, Crucify, it was um, about four and a half, <laughs> as in being written. Uh -huh. And uh, any, any particular story or inspiration? or? Well, I was sick of being a victim. So um, I kind of stewed this up. Is this... Um, have, have the words uh, touched anybody that might have, have victimized you in the past at all? Oh, well, I've done it myself. Yeah. I mean, you know. Something we do to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I put different hats on. <laughs> all right, great. Crucify from Little Earthquakes. Enjoy it. Every day I cruise 
sick of being Jeans I am Jeans Got a kick for a dog Bacon full of I gotta I have my supper ring So that I can have my cross I know a, a cat named Easter He says Will you ever learn You're just an empty cage girl If you kill the bird I've been looking for a savior In these dirty streets Looking for a savior Beneath these dirty sheets I've been raising up my hands Dropping on the nail I got enough guilt to stop My own religion What do we Crucify ourselves Every day I Crucify myself And nothing to do is good enough for you I crucify She